Now, there's a new way for consumers who generate electricity to store it and make an income out of it. The infrastructure comes from a company called Red Earth and founder Charlie Walker joins us now via Skype to explain. Hi, Charlie. Welcome to Startup Daily. Good afternoon. Thank you very much. Great to have you on, Charlie. I think the fact that we've got two people playing in a similar space tells you that there is a maturity growing in the energy production in this country. Tell us about what Red Earth does. Sure. So uh, we set up Red Earth in 2013 and um, we were conscious that um, last century you produce coal, you, you burn coal and produce power and send it down a long wire. This century is going to be intermittent generation from renewables. And so we didn't quite know the detail, but in, when we set the company up, we set out to uh, build systems that would help customers and businesses and residences make use and store their own power. And uh, we spent five years of our own money and time not selling anything um, and just making systems that we knew would empower customers uh, to do that. Um, in that time, we had a tech change from lead acid batteries like in your car to lithium batteries like in your phone, which are uh, just a better battery. And in 2018, we started selling uh, systems off grid primarily. So um, we made them super strong and that, that's the name Red Earth is, is to put systems in the outback that don't stop working despite all the um, Aussie environmental challenges coming at them. And then since 2018, uh, 1st of January, we've been selling, we've been, been increasing sales about 30% per quarter. And we're now in a, to a place where we spend quite a bit of money in R&D still. And this latest release that you're referring to um, is really the next level. It's, it enables people to make use and store their own power on their terms. So, you know, if you have a roof uh, in your house, that's enough to fill your car up with energy to drive all of the household needs and more. And so this is basically uh, um, a, a way to give consumers independence about how they make use and store their own energy, not on the terms of the utility, but on their terms. And, you know, there is enough energy hitting your roof of the average house every day to do anything you need, um, including sending it to grandma. So this is this is um, our latest product that uh, is um, along the lines of empowering people. So Charlie, have you guys moved from servicing a, a mainly commercial market to, to now dealing with retail consumers? And, and if so, what's that challenge been like in terms of, of product rollout and uh, marketing distribution? Yeah, I think uh, in, in this game, you've got to earn your right to actually to supply the commercial market because it's very, they're very big uh, systems, very a um, lot of engineering in it. And so uh, the way we started was actually with with consumers. Um, uh, we're transitioning now the other way to to commercial. Um, the cutting your teeth with consumers is is great. It's very rewarding. Um, I, bizarrely, uh, just a bit of trust goes a long way in this game. A lot of cowboys out there hate to say it. Um, and being Aussie owned and made, and having uh, inland call centres and um, te full on tech support, you know, 18 hours a day. Uh, basically engenders trust and we're trying to say that we're going to be we'll provide you the system we'll be here we'll guarantee it no equivalents for 10 years but it, it's challenging doing that is is challenging um, but uh, and there's things you can't imagine that consumers want color color is the latest thing we change the color consumers love it <laughs> <laughs> all sorts of yeah, forget the tech I love it, but does it come in blue? Hey, Charlie, um, one of the things you talk about is wanting to be the dominant player in the internet of energy market, which you put it a $19 billion market. Mm. Can you take us through that and just explain what you mean? Yeah, I mean, it's analogous to what happened to the internet, and I'm um, old enough to know uh, that we used to have telephone lines to make telephone calls. Um, and uh, it, it evolved into using telephone lines to do entirely different stuff, uh, you know, to set up a network and to, to share photos and all that sort of thing that the internet brings. It's exactly analogous to electricity. It was, the electricity grid was sent, uh, set up to generate electricity in one place and send it down a wire to another place, and it was one-way traffic. The internet of energy um, comes with empowering people to make their own um, electricity, and uh, now people can make it at their household and they can send it other places and do other things with it. And so if, if, if one suburb goes down because there's a, you know, a cyclone and then the other sub, well, that suburb needs electricity and the other suburb is very sunny, you can send it over or you can send it down to Tassie or what have you. So w what we see is um, the existing infrastructure is going to be used differently. It's not going to be sent, used for sending electricity one way. And this is, this is one use that we're putting it to 
uh, for example, trading your own energy. If you're away on the holidays, set it to sell, and you come back and you may grade quite a few dollars. So this is just one use. There's going to be a thousand different uses, um, and you know we, we think of it as the internet of energy, but it all comes from earning your stripes, getting hardware into people's houses uh, that works to their benefit, not the benefit of the utility. The utilities are trying to make last century's infrastructure work for them, um, and this is next century. So the concept of the virtual power plant, mm. which is part of this, how much do you think that will roll out over the next decade to become a dominant part of the model in energy production? Yeah, it's, it's definitely uh, going to roll out. And we call it the, the personal power plant, power plant because the virtual power plant is set up to help the utilities make money using last century's grid. So it's really a thing to help them manage the grid, which is now outdated. And so it's all the virtual power plants are orientated around utilities um, fixing their transmission problems and voltage rises and that sort of thing. Ours is more about the customer because it's clear the customer doesn't need to pay big, big companies to use electricity when they can make it themselves. So uh, it, it's going to definitely be um, a widespread mainstream um, adop adoption and um, uh, I think this is just a way that we help the customer e exploit it to their own ends, not the ends of a big company. Do you think the amount of, of income that they can generate for, the, for their own households through this really has the potential to, to grow this market uh, to a whole nother level? Yes, it does. And I think um, the income's, income's great after you've saved money. So saving money is the best thing you can do because, of course, that's after tax money. And so if, if like a lot of our customers like me, I have a thousand dollar a quarter bill, it's dropped on you at the end of three months, you've got to find a thousand dollars. And um, so you, number one job is to save that expense, which is easy enough to do. And then number two job is to make a little bit of money on top of that or when you're on holiday. And so 100 percent of the average household roof. Um, can mean you have no electricity bills, which in my case would save you $4,000 a year um, after tax, which is $6,500 pre-tax. So you're giving yourself a $6,500 pay rise. Um, and if you can make more money on that, then even better, the, the returns go up. If you can also save money on not going to the fuel station by powering an electric vehicle from your roof, which is big enough on average to do that, I spend 100 bucks a month uh, a week on fuel. So that's $5,000 after tax. That's 7500 pre-tax. I just worked out a $15,000 pay rise from uh, buying a pretty ordinary system uh, that's that's set up to uh, work for the customer and not, not grid. Charlie, it sounds a bit like you're terrifying the treasurer, Josh Frydenberg, just <laughs> as he's put out my EFO. In that context, I do want to ask, how much do you think the political will is there for the scenarios that you're hoping that Red Earth will build to come true? Because you do need government to be part of this process. 100 percent and, and great question that the government the government has got a uh, an issue which is why they in, in, uh, came in with solar incentives in the first place the grid is not set up for renewables intermittent generation um full stop secondarily secondarily um energy is going to electricity is going to be the new form of energy it's not going to be coal or, or petrol or what have you and it's transitioning to electricity right now and so the government sees an outdated grid that's breaking um, companies screaming about it and wanting the government to bail them out. And it sees the new technology, which is cheap and economically driven. It's not driven because we want to do the right thing. It's driven by economics. So they see that. Um, and I, you know, that's why we have these incentives in place. So it's a magic, magic solution for governments to push along solar, push along battery, push along the personal power plant. And um, best for the government, it's paid for by the consumer. So they don't even have to foot the bill they just got to put a bit of policy in place and they will enable people to grab that economic benefit from using a red earth system all right <laughs> charlie walker more power to you thanks for joining us on startup daily to tell us about red earth all the best for 2021 and have a great christmas thank you very much happy christmas to you back thank you